I'm looking for... Ah, there he is, Rembrandt, one of the most famous painters in the history of art. Rembrandt was born in Leiden in 1606 and he was already famous when he arrived in Amsterdam later. He would stay there until his death in 1669. Rembrandt lived in different houses. One is the most famous, now known as the Rembrandt House Museum in Amsterdam. Today I'm going to show you the places related to Rembrandt, his students and his commissioners. But how? Since we are in lockdown, I need to stay at home. But don't worry, all I need are some pictures, a map of Amsterdam and a board game. Let's start with the house where Rembrandt was born in Leiden. Unfortunately, that house is demolished in 1927. Rembrandt lived here with his dad, Harman Pietersson van Rijn, who was a miller, and his mom, Nilsgen Willemsdochter van Zuidbroek, daughter of a baker. Plus, nine other siblings. Three already died at a young age. Rembrandt was number nine. We know that one brother became a baker and one became a shoemaker. All that's left is this plaque and an artwork by Stephen Balkohol from 2006 in the same street. At the age of seven, Rembrandt attended the Latin school that still exists in Leiden. And between 1619 and 1622, he worked in the studio of the painter Jacob van Swanenburg. This building also still exists and is now the young Rembrandt studio at Langebrug. A very early work by Rembrandt is on show at the Lakenhal Museum in Leiden. He painted it when he was 17 or, or 18 years old. In 1625, Rembrandt goes to Amsterdam for a short period of time to study with the highly respected painter Peter Lastman. As you can see, Rembrandt learned a lot from this master. When Rembrandt returns in Leiden, he starts his own studio, somewhere at Kort Galgewater, close to his birth house. The bridge over Galgewater is a 1983 replica of an original 17th century bridge, now known as the Rembrandt Bridge. You can also see Windmill de Put, similar to the one Rembrandt's father owned. Rembrandt shared his workshop with a colleague and friend, Jan Lievens, who was also very talented. Lievens painted this portrait of a young Rembrandt. And Rembrandt's first student here is Gerrit Dau. Gerrit was 14 years old, Rembrandt was 22. In 1631, Rembrandt moves to Amsterdam, now for good. Amsterdam was loaded with wealthy merchant bankers and collectors in 17th century, thanks to the VOC, the Dutch East India Company. They all needed paintings to decorate their fancy canal houses. That's Peter Lastman's house at Breestraat. This is now the spot for the Academy of Theatre and Dance. Rembrandt lived here with an art dealer, Hendrik Eulenborg, in the same street at Peter Lastman. This is also a modern building nowadays. Funny enough, Rembrandt is going to live next door later now the Rembrandt house, with Van Eulenburg's niece Saskia. Rembrandt will marry Saskia in 1634. But first, they move out of Uncle Eulenburg's house at Breestraat and start to live in a brand new and expensive rental apartment at Nieuwe Doelenstraat. The rent is 600 guilders per year. A simple craftsman, a carpenter for example, makes 200 or 300 guilders a year in Rembrandt's time. The house is gone, but there's a great cafe now. 
in the same street, actually next door, there used to be the guild house of the Cloveniers, now the Dula Hotel. Seven years later, Rembrandt will paint a famous night watch for their banquet room. But first, will Rembrandt and Saskia move again? This time, they find a nice rental house at Bakery de Four Sugarloaves, or the Viersuikerbrode. It's where the Town Hall and National Opera are now since the 1980s. In 1639, Rembrandt and Saskia become neighbors of her uncle Eulenborg's house at Breestraat. He already moved out. Another painter, Nicolas Piccanoy, now lives there. The house that became the Rembrandt House Museum in 1911 was extremely expensive. 13,000 guilders. Rembrandt needed two loans for that, but thought he would be okay being the, um, the Justin Bieber of 17th century. He could earn lots of money. And he did. Most of his commissioners lived close by. Rembrandt made a painting, a group painting, for the anatomy theatre of Dr. Tulp and later Dr. Diamond, which is now a restaurant at Newmarket. Dr. Tulp's daughters marry important men in Amsterdam. Daughter Katerina, she married Dr. Arno Tolings, and daughter Margareta marries Jan Six, and they live at Klovenburg's Wald. Along the same canal, Nicolaas van Bambeek and his wife Agatha Bas. And at Trippenhuis, a house built by their sons, who are weapon dealers, Jacob Tripp and his wife Margareta de Geer. And also a portrait by Rembrandt for Maria Tripp. Ephraim Bueno, an important Jew. Yeah, and he works for the mayor, Andries de Graaf, at Herengracht 446 which is now the house of fashion designers Victor and Rolf. Like in Leiden, Rembrandt had students. They have to pay a huge fee to be able to work in the studio of the famous Rembrandt. For example, Ferdinand Bull. He will marry a very wealthy woman and lives at Keiselsgracht, now known as Museum van Loon. So while Rembrandt earns lots of money, at the same time he spends even more. He collects stuff and goes bankrupt. And there was more misfortune. His wife Saskia dies in 1642, the year he painted the Night Watch. Rembrandt buries her in the old church, which is now in the heart of the red light district. Rembrandt has to sell her spot in 1662, when he has no money left to pay for the grave rites. Saskia gave birth to their son Titus nine months before, and she probably died of tuberculosis. Plus, she already gave birth to three other children before Titus. They all died shortly after being born, and they were buried in the South Church, or Zuiderkerk, two minutes walk from the Rembrandt house. Henrik Justoffels, the maid, and Rembrandt's new lover later, since 1649, she dies in 1663, and Rembrandt's son Titus will die in 1668. Rembrandt tried to save his house and sell his belongings at auctions, and he goes to the pawn house quite often. That pawn house still exists. It's this Stadsbank van Lening, Amsterdam. But it will all disappear. In 1658, Rembrandt has to sell the house and needs to move to a small rental apartment in Jordan area, 
the poor people's area, where the people live who dug all the canals in Amsterdam. His new address for the next 11 years is here at Rosengracht, now a 20th century building. Rembrandt will die in 1669 and is buried in the Westerkerk, the West Church. There was no money left for a proper grave, so that grave was emptied later. His bones went on a pile and vanished. The great Rembrandt is gone. I'm so happy that we can enjoy Rembrandt's paintings and prints in museums like the Rijksmuseum. And when this COVID-19 crisis is over, I would love to guide you in Leiden and in Amsterdam because I'm an art historian and a private guide and you're very welcome to contact me for a private tour. Stay safe and healthy.